we are going to be talking about 10 reasons as to why USCIS may deny your green card application. Okay, in this video, I'm going to lay out the foundation for you so that you will know how to better position yourself. Okay, when it comes to applying for a green card. Uh, my name is Bijun Gwanda, as you know it. I'm an immigration lawyer based here in DC. However, I do have clients across the country and around the world because we are dealing with complex US immigration law cases. If you need my channel, just go ahead and subscribe. If you are not new, welcome back. Thank you for subscribing. And please do not forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. If you enjoy the content, you go ahead and share like don't forget to comment below us or follow us on all platforms TikTok, instagram facebook page facebook group threads let's get right into it number one misrepresentation okay we talked about it yesterday misrepresentation if you have misrepresented facts at some point during your consulate interview most often like most of the time people will forget what they actually told the u.s consulate um that's why we strongly suggest that prior to you going to the interview here in the united states for a green card application you gotta ask for your foia okay request uh freedom of information request request your file so that you will be better prepared for your interview that's the reason you're requesting the file so you will know uh, basically what you said what what you said what you didn't say uh, so that you do not contradict yourself but sometimes people just lie and then the lies become something that will undermine their application so misrepresentation of course you can waive it we talk about it in detail just go ahead and visit my previous video okay number two public charge this comes uh, into play when someone is going to become a public charge for example taking upon a lot of uh, government um, benefits it's going to render you inadmissible but what i wanted to talk about today when it comes to public charge is the fact that sometimes uh, it's going to be denied because the sponsor in question the petitioner does not have sufficient income above the poverty guidelines as described by uscs.gov so that's why you have to really check out the guidelines before you apply and not to mention that you have the right to have a joint sponsor you know so and then pretty much calculate the joint sponsor income so that you don't get to a point of denied because they, they see that the income requirement has not been met then you be, you're going to become a public choice then the application is of course going to get denied number three crimes involving moral interpreting yeah you might have to watch my uh, previous video about crimes involving moral turpitude there is a waiver for it uh, for details just go ahead and watch my previous videos but what i want to point out here is that those type of crimes that shock conscience human conscience uh, such as rape robbery theft, larceny, petty theft, stuff like that, and especially if it's repetitive, those are the crimes involving moral turpitude. Uh, it really touches on morality, and um, in other words, shocking the human conscience. So those crimes will render inadmissible, and the, the, the green card application may get denied. So that's why you have to check out the con conditions when it comes to waivers, so that you will position yourself right away to apply for a waiver and hope that it gets granted number four communicable disease of public health significance you know there is a waiver about it uh, you have to check uscs.gov to learn more about it but just know that this can lead to an application denial a green card application denial number five criminal convictions okay if you have been charged with a crime, it's better to consult with a qualifying, uh, a qualified attorney, of course, so that the, we might be able to help you and really under your specific circumstances to know whether or not that crime 
it's waivable. Or maybe there's lapse of time since the incident occurred. So we might find ways to actually waive it, okay, so that you can avoid the denial. Number six, unlawful presence. You already know that if you've been here unlawfully, failure to maintain a lawful status, non-immigrant lawful status, might lead to a denial unless you are adjusting under family-based immediate relative. Uh, but if you're adjusting under employment, for example, while well, you have to have some type of exceptions in order to actually get your green card uh, granted if you have been here unlawfully for a very long period of time. Um, I've talked about unlawful presence a lot on this channel. You can go ahead and visit that in those other previous video. Uh, number seven, frivolous asylum claim. This one, unfortunately, there is no waiver available for this type of offense. That's why if the application has been deemed frivolous, whether by USCIS or by the court, you have to appeal the decision. You really have to fight this until the last resort, okay? Let's say you are in immigration court, you have to go to the Board of Appeal, you have to get, if it doesn't work at the Board of Appeal, you have to go review the decision to uh, federal court, ask for uh, the Supreme Court to review the case, because if, it's, if the case has been deemed frivolous, as far as asylum is concerned, then you will not be able to adjust that. Is pretty much the green card application is going to be denied. So that's why you fight this one right on. Falsely claiming you a citizen, the same thing for this one. You fight it right on because there's a, a section in the immigration law that says that if you retract those facts in time, uh, falsely claiming you a citizenship, then you will be able to actually erase that if you retract in time within reasonable time what is reasonable time uscs.gov actually has defined that for us okay and have i have also explained it before uh, you can go ahead and visit uh, my previous video as well fraud marriage this one too there's no waiver available the moment uscs starts saying that this marriage is fraudulent it's shame uh, it's a shame marriage, you have to fight it right on. There's one thing for the application to be denied based on abandonment, but there is another thing for them to claim fraud on your application. When it comes to marriage, there's no way for available. You have to fight it, fight it until the end, really, until there's no more fights left uh, so that you can um, take that part out of the record, okay? Lastly, number 10, abandonment. Uh, let's say the petitioner doesn't show up to the interview or you don't show up to the interview while the application, the green card application will be denied based on abandonment. Um, and the bonus, one of the bonus is uh, sometimes you just see it is denied based on discretion. While they use that a lot when they try to figure out whether or not you're a person of good moral and character. You know, good moral and character count. Even if you get uh qualify for a waiver but they really look at negative factors positive factor they out to are they out waiting um they, they really go with the balance right negative factors against positive factors so and then if they really can't figure out if you could person of good moral and character it's going to be denied based on discretion because remember those benefits are discretionary right? they are not mandatory type of relief so USCIS has sole uh, discretion to grant or not to grant a benefit. That's why it's important, it's really important for you to actually consult so that you can receive guidance, okay? Uh, 202 751 at gmail.com. Consultation links are in the description box. You can schedule it on your own time by using the description the links in the description box below until next time bye bye